Well, I'll be careful because I'm even more weepy than Rick. But, uh, <laughs> my name is R.L. Duke. Uh, I work for the fire district uh, for some of you new council members that, that don't know me. I'm also an employee of uh, the fire academy. I teach for Utah Valley State College and their fire science program. So I get to go around all the fire departments in the state and teach them fire science. Um, and I just want you gentlemen to know that throughout my career here, I've never seen Chief Giles make a decision that wasn't in the interests of the safety of this community and in the safety of these men and women sitting here today. It may not be the most popular decision. It may place some burden on individuals, but at the end of the day, it's about public safety and the safety of, of these men. We talk about five-day construction, and you know Rick talked about it continue, continually having the ability to burn. Well, when we go in there and try to put that out, and if it's burned up the contents and it snuffed itself out, you probably all see this show back draft. There's an explosion just waiting to happen to kill firefighters. I got to go to a funeral in Edmonton with two firefighters that that exact same thing happened. Fire burned itself down. It was just holding heat, waiting for the firefighters to open the door because the sprinkler hadn't put it out. Sitting there waiting, and when they did, it killed both of them. Those are some of the reasons why the decisions and why he's voiced the concerns that he's had. Um, you know, Ernie and the chief, he cares about this community and those things. And I hope that you guys, as the commission, will give him the tools that he needs and that we need to effectively do our job and to support us in that endeavor. And I know you have with, with what you have, and I, I hope to look forward to continued support from you in, in that endeavor. Thanks. All right, Uncle. As you go around to the other communities, how do they deal with this conflict with the fire sprinklers? Or is there a conflict in the other communities? Well, I'm not there usually to ask them about their sprinkler ordinances, but I do know that the majority of fire-related incidents, things that deal with the fire department and fire safety are handled by the fire department. No one is in a greater position to, to understand the safety concerns and the life threat concerns to the general public than those that understand that craft. My craft is as a firefighter. That's what I'm teaching is fire science. You know, the building department, they understand building code, building uh, construction. I don't understand that. That's not what I do. I'm a firefighter. So I understand that fire science. I understand the threats that as that building's on fire, how it affects me and the decision processes that I make as that building gets weakened by the fire and the things that I do and, and the tactical decisions I make. But in my experience, the, as I go around, anything that deals with fire safety is handled by the fire department. Firefighter. Um, I've been for 28 years in this county, full time for 17. I just have a couple of questions, or several questions, I guess. Why would we do away with it when we had it in place? It's like we're stepping back 30 years in time. So that's the first question. And what, I mean, whose decision was it, and why to do away with it? Fire sprinklers. Yes, you know, that night we had a discussion on it. We couldn't come to an agreement, but we do. We did make the motion to continue. We do want a fire sprinkler ordinance in place. We just need to tweak it. And, and in the last well, an hour ago, we talked about doing that here between the fire department and the 